Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name, of course, is Jimmy from Pallet of the Dead. Yeah, that's right, the name change has stuck. We're carrying on with more Warhammer and stuff like that. Uh, and today we're going to go through my painting technique for my chain rasp, as you can see right now. Um, there's good, many, many, many steps to do these. We did it one minute at a time. And uh, of course, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, all that good stuff, and let's just jump into it, shall we? Right then, so of course we're starting off with one chain rasp soldier here who is literally uh, with base coat of Corax white. Um, the first coat we're going to do is we're going to put on a liberal layer of apothecary white contrast paint uh, to get a good base, just slap it all over the model um, which will give it a good help to kind of make sure everything takes to it and give us a good start for them robes and the, that ethereal kind of look that we want to get. So as you can see I'm just slapping it on quite quite liberally <laughs> uh, which is good fun next up we're going to move on to that higher cowl part of that kind of robe over the head of the chain rasps there which we're going to use some blood angels red contrast paint the good thing with contrast paints, of course, is no shading involved. You can slap on one layer, it'll look pretty damn good. Uh, it gives you, it settles into recesses a lot darker than it does over edges. Over edges, it settles a little lighter. Um, so it's a good, handy, all-in-one paint for everything you want to do with your model. Of course, with contrast, though, it only really works over lighter colors. So if you're using Corax White, it looks really good. Wraith Bone. Um, even Mechanica Standard Grey can work with it as well. Then next up we're going to move on to having a second layer of the Buffer Carry White. Main reason for it, I wasn't overly keen on how it was looking. I wanted them grey kind of recesses to look a lot darker and to give it a bit more kind of depth in the uh, overall look of the model. I mainly applied it only to the robes so and not so much to things like a weapon and everywhere like that uh, and it also helped neaten up over little parts where i managed to get over go over with red as well Right, so now that that's done, the next step I took was applying some silver metallic paint over certain parts, over the chain and the sword of the chain rasp. So for that, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use some iron breaker just to get it going. Um, you might want to add two layers of this because going over light colors, it looks pretty poor um, and it takes a little while to stick. Um, it's not the greatest going over a white colour with a silver paint it doesn't kind of look right in a way um, which so I did do two coats in the end for this next up just to kind of add a little bit more kind of detail and break the colour I added some brass scorpion some or scorpion brass to things like the pommel of the sword. Um, on a few of the other chain rasps I added it to the hilt as well. Then once we've done that I moved on to the stone while everything else was drying so we used a layer of storm vermin fur which on those rocks just to kind of get that kind of striking balance and so it kind of fits in with a lot of the other bases that we'll see for the rest of our night horned army as well. Of course if you're doing it in different styles it's entirely up to you. You can use things like the Shabti Bone um, or Wraith Bone, Seraphim Sepia and kind of colours like that to kind of give it that kind of sandstone kind of look. So yeah, so while that was drying, I put over a layer of Null Oil 
over the chains, over the metallic parts, over that sword. Gives it a lot more depth, makes it look a bit more aged and a bit more weathered, um, which gives it a kind of a great look. Norn oil is really, really good for shading in bits and pieces, giving it a bit, making it look a little bit darker. Uh, if you're doing this, make sure you're being a little bit careful with it. It can go a bit everywhere if you use too much of it, um, especially when you're on models like this where you've got part of the part of the kind of metallic work inside the robes. Once I've done that, I added some typhus corrosion. Typhus corrosion, of course, is a technical paint. Gives it that kind of dirty, rusty look, um, which works well when you dry brush certain colours over it as well, which we move on to in the next couple of steps as well. And I'll put it on, not all over the metal, but I'll put it in certain places. I say it makes it look rusty, which is the main thing. It gives it that kind of dirty, grimy, aged look that we want with things like the chain rasps. As you can see I've zoomed in there so you can kind of see how it started to look. I mean that's as it wet, it is wet so it's not too bad um, and it looks pretty cool, gives it a lot more kind of character as well. Next up, while that was waiting to dry, I moved on to the base again. Added a bit more Dawnstone over it to kind of break up that Storm Vermin fur. Um, makes, gives that stone a little bit more depth. Um, yeah, and adds it more in line with the other models that we've got. Things like the Stormcast, so it looks like they're all on the same battlefield. Next up, over that Typhus Corrosion, all I did was a little dry brush of Riser Rust. This, of course, adds to that kind of rusty kind of look that you want to get on things like chains and stuff like that. Um, it's good for doing when you're doing little bits of scenery as well to have a dry brush of things like that over metal work to give it a lot, make it look a lot older and a bit more ancient and definitely a little bit more grimy. Also works well with things like doing kind of like armor for certain kind of units as well. I also used a little bit of nickel nilakai oxide um, just to break it up just to give it a bit more kind of aging and stuff like that but I use it very very lightly. You can use it a lot heavier if you want um, and then just dry brush over it with other bits and pieces. So once that had, dry, had dried I also did dry brush over some iron breaker just to kind of add a bit more of that metallic kind of look to it as well because rust isn't just kind of like an orangey kind of color it does have a little bit of metallic flaking in there as well um, and it also kind of reduces the look of that blue from the nilakai oxide as well Next, I moved back onto that base. All I did was I added some little bit of Administratium Grey uh, as an edge highlight and a light dry brush as well, just to break up the stone look. And then we only moved on to the fleshy parts of the chain rasps themselves. For this, what I've used is I've used Iron Rack Skin and a highlight of deep kin flesh. These kind of like it make it look like the flesh is quite mottled and very aged and not exactly living flesh. Um, also added some corn red as you can see to the handle of the sword. Um, breaks it up, gives it a bit more life, makes the sword look a bit older. You don't need to go hell for level with it, you don't need to add absolutely crap loads of paint to it because you might cock it up. Um, once I've done that I also added some a shabty bone to the skull feature of the chain rasp and what I did went to kind of as I've done before with other skulls just to give it that bit of a highlight and a bit more depth and kind of warmth to it just add 
a shade of seraphim sepia and I just left it at that. Now we've moved on to the base as you can see I'm just adding some sterling mud just to fill the gaps give it a bit more life you can add other parts to the bases as well if you want so add some schools some graves all that type of stuff once the sterling mud had dried because it's a bit more of a bland color I add a dry brush of scrag brown and a lighter dry brush of gorefor brown as well just to dilute that kind of look that scrag brown will give it because it gives it a bit probably a little bit more warmth than I really really wanted in all honesty And what I also did there with that flame on the side, as you can see, I'm adding some hex wraith flame just to add to that ethereal kind of look that you want to get from your ghosts, uh, as they are spectres and legions of Nagash. And then, lastly, all I did break up that grey inside of the cloak of the chain rasp, I added a very, very light edge highlight of Corax white. Um, there are a few parts where I've gone probably a little bit heavier handed when I wanted to, but that is sometimes the way I paint. Um, I say I'm not, as I've said before, I'm not the best painter, not the greatest by any means, or anything like that. But there yeah, you pretty much have how I've done these uh, chain rasp hoard. Once again, if you've liked the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff, check out the links down below, and I'll see you in the very near future. Bye bye now.